Welcome to the Warrior Way Podcast, where we talk about all things Liberty Christian School. I'm your host for today, Jared Malinchuk, Assistant Head of School, and I'm so glad you're joining us for today's show. Today is episode number 39, and we're talking excellence and community with our Director of Sports Performance, David Neal. So with that, let's dive into today's conversation. David, thanks for being on the podcast. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy that you're here. It's always fun to talk with someone who has a huge impact on students in ways that sometimes we don't even think about when it comes to an education. But I think the work that you do, and you'll explain here shortly, is really important for a lot of our young people at Liberty. So tell us about your current role at Liberty. I I introduced you as the director of sports performance. So what does that look like? And then if you could back up a little bit and tell us about your past work experiences as well. Absolutely. So my position as director of sports performance means I am in charge of the physical and athletic development of all of our student athletes, sixth grade through seniors in high school. Really traditionally, you would call that a strength conditioning coach, but we changed the name a couple of years ago because it strength conditioning coach seems like it only applies to the football team and maybe the baseball team, but really every athlete needs to be in the weight room, working on mobility, working on power, working on strength, working on all these different athletic qualities that can enhance their abilities on the field and you know, help them to learn skill sets that will help them the rest of their life because, you know, we're always going to have our bodies. That's right. And if we can teach them to use them, that's going to be good. Amen to that. So tell us about before, uh, how long have you been in your current role at Liberty? Seven years. Seven years. My goodness. And we'll, we'll dive into some of those stories. Tell us about your past experience before you came on Liberty's campus. So I was a collegiate strength conditioning coach for five years before I came to Liberty. I played football at Texas Tech. When I got done, NFL wasn't happening. So I got into the coaching world, and I was a strength coach at Texas Tech for a year. Then when uh, Tommy Tuberville left Texas Tech and went to Cincinnati, he brought me with him. So I was a strength coach at the University of Cincinnati for three years. And that was a cool experience because I got to work with not just football, but swim and lacrosse and golf and, you know, a plethora of sports. And it was really, we had Olympians that were there and the Kelsey brothers were still hanging around a little bit. So it was (laughs) was fun. And then uh, I spent two years after that at the University of Texas on Charlie Strong's staff, and that was just football. And uh, as often happens in college football, you know, (laughs) there are coaching changes at the top and everybody underneath also changes. And when that happened, uh, Randy Mays gave me a call and asked me to come to Liberty and interview for what they described as a collegiate style strength conditioning program at a high school. Wow. And I did that. And I remember being in the interview. It was really cool. It was the first time I'd ever been in a job interview. And they talked about Jesus and they talked about Amen. impact and they talked about these things that I was hungry for and felt like was missing from who I was as a coach, but had never been encouraged to see the fruit of in my day-to-day basis. So it's been, that got me in the door and it's been an incredible experience and, and it's been exactly where God's wanted me to be for the last seven years now. Amen. I know we've had some conversations before, but for those that are listening, what what is it about the college life in terms of working in those kind of strength and conditioning environments <laughs> compared to the high school life. It's still a very important work, but it's very different. I mean, just talk about even the work, the workload that you had back in those days. Yes. The, there are a lot of hours put in as a college strength coach. Most of my days would start with a 345 alarm clock so I could get to work by 430. <laughs> And then they, most of those days would also end 7, 7.30 at night. And that's, that's in the off-season. Once you're in season, you also spend two days a week traveling with the team. Sunday nights would end at 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. I remember, I remember one time one of the universities had me log my hours. And, that's um, comical. It, oh, it, it, was, it was like you really don't think we're hitting 40 hours. <laughs> and, uh, we weren't, and we weren't paid hourly. It wasn't like yeah. you got overtime or anything. It was, you, get, you get paid $2 an hour essentially is what it ended up being. But I logged 120 hours one week, and they stopped asking us to log our hours. <laughs> we don't want any lawsuits. We're never doing that again. Yeah. That's right. You said seven years in your current role, and it, it is such a unique and a strength of not just Liberty's athletic program, but our whole program. And you used the word body, which I thought was great, because even in the spiritual formation of our students, it's not just the mind. It's also the body and the way we take care of our body, and not to steal your thunder. Uh, but what do you love? Tell us, what do you love about your position? What's unique about our program? I think you hit the nail on the head right there in that oftentimes churches ignore the body Yeah, and we are not souls trapped in this body. That's going to be gone one day. God says he's going to give us rebirth and he's going to have our bodies be what they originally were supposed to be. 
they're going to be resurrected the way he designed them to be. He didn't create us as spirits without body. He created us both spirit and flesh. And so I think there's many, many lessons, especially for boys, that they learn through action and through mm. physicality. And so there's, there's things like teaching the value of work ethic and the value of habits and the value of small incremental growth over time and how that can, you know, something, something as simple as an increasing a, a, a lift in the weight room. And it happens in tiny little increments. You put on two pounds one week and you do it again, you do it again. But over the course of a year, you know, those little two pound jumps can add up to 50, 60, 70 pounds. And I think we grow that same way spiritually. We grow yeah. that same way mentally. We grow that same way in maturity. And so getting our young people to understand these lessons of how they develop as a person is often well implemented in the weight room and the the health aspect of it. And if, if you feel healthy and you feel strong, you're going to be more successful in the other aspects of your life. I think the body's a temple and it's important that we're good stewards of it and teaching our students how to do that. So um, there's a lot of really cool things that I get to implement that they're just not going to get other places in a school setting. That's right. And you mentioned the, even the pitch when you were hired on here interviewing around the collegiate style approach. And I know this from the program that you oversee as well. You have students that, and just for, tell our listeners, you have a, a kiddo do, playing tennis and a kiddo who's you know playing left tackle in football. They need something radically different. So you, what does that look like on the weight room side of things? It's funny because they both need something radically different and they also need the same thing. For instance, if I have a tennis athlete who wants to improve, they're, you know, with tennis, you want to have good agility skills. You want to be able to move side to side. You want to be able to produce power with rotational force. Right. You, you want to have enough mobility to both reach the, the, the balls that goes over the net, but also to serve with more explosive power. So how do I develop that in a tennis athlete? Well, I got to build a base of strength. You know, I've got to enhance the mobility in the hips. I have to enhance the rotational mobility. Well, how do you improve a lineman? Well, a lineman need, needs to be able to produce more force, so they need to be stronger. They need to have really good hips so they can bend, so you've got enhanced mobility in the hip, and you know, you've know you got enhanced rotational mobility with a lineman too. So a lot of the things you're doing, you're looking at the same – the body is doing the same thing mm. with a different way it is doing it. Um, and this, the younger the athlete, the more similar training is going to look. As they develop and you kind of check off the boxes of what is necessary, like let's just say with general strength, a tennis player is going to need less general strength than that lineman. So there's going to be a point much earlier in their training yeah. where we switch from general strength building to sports-specific application of that strength, whereas a lineman, we're going to continue to try to develop and, and maximize the strength piece of that longer. So what does that look like? Number one, there's probably a different – intensity with which I approach training with those two athletes. The lineman probably likes to lift really heavy stuff and <laughs> have right. loud music and be intense and get yelled at. Yes. That's his that's his jam. So we lean into that. The tennis player might be intimidated by the weight room. Not everyone. We have actually our tennis team loves to lift. They're they're really yeah, Coach White does a great job of encouraging them to be in there and they've bought in a lot. But um with the tennis athlete, I'm probably a little bit more laid back with our approach to how we're lifting. We're probably going to change the implements. Uh, tennis, tennis is more likely to be in a front squat position, and they're more likely to hold dumbbells during some of their exercises. And then we're probably applying a better rotational aspect with tennis and, and working on separating the, the shoulders from the hips and things like that, whereas with linemen, we're concerned with concussions. So mm -hmm. we're probably going to add in some neck training, stuff like that. So that, those are some of the thought processes when we're approaching our different teams and how they train. I love it in the same way our, our – or excellent teachers do, you're thinking about the different populations of students you're trying to serve. And that's such a beautiful thing. At the, at the time of this recording, you just recently shared, uh, not as the coach Neil there in the weight room, but as the coach Neil leading a chapel service. Mm. And I know it impacted a lot of people. I would love for our parents to hear just a little summary of your talk and why you thought it was so important for our kids to hear that message. So my chapel message could be boiled down to this, that every one of us has a story of how we want our life to go. We're all trying to write a story with our life, right? And when God looks at our life, he also wants to write a story. But his story is not going to look like our story. And usually when we get frustrated, when we have doubts, when we lack faith, it's because the story we are trying to write goes in a different direction. And 
it is really, really important for us to look at the story God wants to write in our lives and trust that story. Trust that where he is bringing us is a place where he can use us for his kingdom and that he's a better story writer than us. The story he's writing is way better than the story you want to write. And so we talked about the ways we see that in the scriptures, the way we see that in our faith, and that God's message to us through much of the Bible is trust the story I'm writing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the lightning round. Here we're going to have our guests answer as many questions as possible in 30 seconds. David, are you ready? Do I win a prize if I get the most? <laughs> you absolutely do. Okay. Here we go. What was your favorite homemade meal as a kid? Steak. <laughs> favorite cartoon growing up? Bugs Bunny. Favorite muscle and why? Ooh, glutes. And why? They, they are the most powerful muscle in the body. I knew you were going to say this. What are some songs right now on David's personal playlist? Ooh, uh, Charles Wesley Godwin. I'm listening to him right now. He's really good. And I have to ask you, last but not least, most annoying thing that our boys do, or girls, in the weight room is what? Talk when I'm talking. David, I want to give you the final word for today's show. Go ahead and share a word of encouragement or a scripture with the warrior community. My final word is this. There is only one great I am. All of us are only what could be. So never doubt what God could do with your life if you would really let him. I want to thank our Director of Sports Performance, David Neal, for being on the podcast today, along with Mr. Josh and Mr. Haburn for the behind-the-scenes support of the show. If you have any questions or comments for the show, feel free to drop us a line at podcast at mylcs.com. Be sure to subscribe to Wear Away Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you consume your podcast services. Until next time, go Warriors.